once again here at Castle Wiperstone. For those who don't know me yet, my name is Lord Ignatz, and I have made it my business to continue telling the scariest stories of the old days so that they are not forgotten. But tell me, do you still know at Billy and Lizzie who ran into the Monsteric Skull Forest at the time and their uncle Lucy who ran along with the other villagers to save the children in front of the she Werewolf Veronica, Vampire Vincent, Witch Grace and their zombie son Thomas? Everyone suffered from the curse of the Skull Forest. And to this day, we don't know what became of Billy. But you know that even before this creepy adventure, the ghosts of the old days made themselves felt? No. But they have with Billy's and Lizzie's uncle Lucy. Are you curious? Then I want to tell you the press story of this old legend. In 1942, SS Oberstgruppenführer Emil von Otterfels was in his office in Berlin and was thinking. That day, however, he was very nervous and excited. What he would say to SS Gruppenführer Dr. Oswald Grünbaum that day may change their history forever. Then, at 10 o'clock sharp, there was a knock on the door and Mr. von Otterfels said, Come in. Ah! Oh. Dr. Greenbaum, Herr Hitler, welcome to Berlin, nice to see you, where were you last stationed? Hell Hitler, Herr von Otterfels, glad to see you too, I was last in the concentration camp in Oiland. Oh, that's a long way. How is it possible for you to be here so quickly? I'm here with my private plane. The machine is outside the house. But no to the reason of my visit. I was happy but also surprised to suddenly receive a letter from you a few days ago. After all, we've never worked with each other before. The letter only said that you would need my help on a top secret matter. 
for Führer and Fatherland. That's right, Dr. Greenbaum. I have been here to that you would be very familiar with Egyptian mythology. It's about the cursed pharaoh Amen Ra. You were correctly informed. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting that you come to speak of this pharaoh. A very extraordinary case of Egyptian history and of course the mythology. But how can I help you there? What do you want to know? Well, everything, but in the short version. I want to make sure that you really know about it, Dr. Greenbaum. Amen Ra was the ruler of the Anubis dynasty and lived in Kanat in Egypt. Because of his crimes, people tried to erase his name after his death so that he would be forgotten in vain. In order to satisfy his physical instincts, he lived with several women. Amen Ra was the last pharaoh of the sixth dynasty and was initially considered a wise and a handsome ruler. He came to power in 2184 BC. Every night he became an assassin who killed the political enemies of the Egyptian nobles. Amon also killed his adversaries and brought their beautiful widows into his harem. Amon Ra killed all of his political opponents, murdered the priests and destroyed the status of the gods. He ate the flesh of the murdered and their hearts to scare his enemies. Amen enjoyed the taste of human flesh and his inhumanity. However, one night when he was looking for a new victim, he was unlucky because the victim wasn't unarmed. This man had a dagger with him and disfigured the face of the pharaoh. The next day, Amen cut the nose of a woman and ate it in front of her eyes. Each servant received 20 slaps in the face. His wish? Everyone should be a monster like him. At least everyone should look as monstrous like him.
the subordinates rebelled and killed to the monstrous pharaoh. <laughs> Amen Ra was cursed, his mummy, his body and his soul. In the chaos after Amen's reign, the position of the pharaoh was shaken. The divided kingdom was dissolved and the complex kingdom suffered from famine and anarchy for two decades. Amen waited 4000 years in his pyramid until his sarcophagus was opened on a British expedition in 1924. As a mummy, Amon rose from his grave, killed the expedition researchers and fled to freedom. Amon's curse enveloped him in living human flesh with endless hunger. The hungry Amen set out on the long march through the Sahara desert. However, Amen kept going back to his sarcophagus. Just every 20 years could people summon Pharaoh with the right formula and command him what they want. But only then anything else would be too dangerous and you would have to find the sarcophagus first. This is considered lost. The sarcophagus was considered lost. People of mine I sent to Egypt for excavation, found it and brought it to Berlin. At least, Pharaoh Amen Ra. The sarcophagus was too heavy. Some men died, but <laughs> I didn't care. It is for the Pharaoh after all. Imagine that so much that we could do with Amit's power. That would mean the ultimate rule for the Führer and the final victory. We would get high political positions. We would be shared. We only need the mantra. And I need your help, cause of the mantra. Ah, I'm starting to understand. I like your way of thinking. I actually have an ancient Egyptian mantra that could help us. Ha! <laughs> if this whole hocus pocus should be real at all. Honestly, we are both grown ups and know that there is no such thing. Then why are there so many copies of witnesses who say the opposite? Let's just give it a try and find out. What do we have to lose? Tonight we meet us at my house. Among other things you bring the mantra with you and then we drive together with the mummy to an old farmhouse. In the cellar of which we would have the opportunity to try out the ritual. The house belongs to my brother, but strictly speaking the house is empty. My car is at our disposal and we drive to Oiland for a few hours near the skull forest. So, 
I actually have more important things to do than fathom ghost stories. But, well, let's do it. See you tonight. Hell Hitler. Yes, Hell Hitler. The two big Nazis made us agreed and packed the wrapped mummy together with the ritual utensils from Dr. Greenbaum in Mr. von Otterfeld's car. Then they drove and after almost two hours they arrived to the skull forest and the village house. They got the pharaoh out of the car and carried him into the house, directly into the basement. My goodness, I wouldn't have imagined the mummy so difficult. Hopefully all of this is worth the effort. I promised her to take part, but I'm still skeptical. Besides, what if Amen Ra comes back to life but doesn't obey us? because we summoned him too early. Everything will be fine. Let's put him in the corner over there. All right. And then I quickly get to the other ritual utensils out of the car. Be not surprised. The magic symbol which I will paint on the floor with calc will look like a Jewish star. However, it is a hexagram. The hexagram is also six-pointed. I don't understand that much. Do what you think. The main thing is that it works properly. I will do my best. See you soon. It was only a few minutes before Mr. von Otterfels was back and brought the things with him. They quickly set up everything and got ready for the ritual. Then Dr. Greenbaum spoke the magic formula. At Hobo in Toto. Mil desperandum sine die. It works. It actually works. I'm going crazy. That's impossible. Welcome back among the living, Amon Ra. Now you will serve our Pharaoh. Do you understand? What are you saying? You want me to serve someone? Your little insignificant dung beetle. You are the ones who should serve me. After all, I am Pharaoh Amen Ra. In addition, it is a shame 
to have to speak in your <coughs> language so that you understand me. But you won't have to understand me for long. You wanted to make me a slave, a pharaoh. I take your life for this disrespect. But we woke you up. You are indebted to us. Awakened? Are you kidding me? Are you serious when you say that? You have disturbed my eternal rest. And I should also be grateful to you for that. No way! Know that you are dead. Disintegrate in what you are from and what you have in value. Dust. <laughs> So the mystical mummy Pharaoh Amen Ra came into the basement of a small, inconspicuous village house near the Skull Forest. Then, in the spring of 1945, at the end of the war, the German Empire was in ruins. The leader Adolf Hitler committed suicide. At least, that is assumed. Maybe he died for a completely different reason. <laughs> the dream of the millennial empire was a dream and so nobody found out anything about the location of Amen Ra, at least for now. In January 1946, a farmer bought the village house. His name was Lucy. He was the uncle of Billy and Lizzie. Good morning, Mr. Wright. How are you? Good morning, Lucy. I'm fine. As mayor, I always have a lot to do, but everything else is fine. Do Lizzie and Billy already live with you? No, not yet. They will reach the village tomorrow. Unfortunately, because of the people at the offices, it took a while for me to be given parental authority. Yes, something like that is bad, but unfortunately, normal. Otherwise, it is of course also quite good to double check everything and work with much care. Especially when it comes to matters with children. After all, there are other families where the relatives are catastrophic. Yes, that's right. Terrible what happened to Lizzie and Billy's parents half a year ago, isn't it? Nobody wants that. And all because of these monsters that live in the Skull Forest. Yes, they were very brave and wanted that especially their children didn't have to live near monsters. That's why they started hunting for the monsters. 
But unfortunately, they never came back. Only her bloody clothes had been found. It was a big shock for the whole village. They lived in the house behind the school, didn't they? Yes, that's exactly where they lived. After the death of the parents, Lizzie and Billy came to the orphanage in Wiperstone for a few weeks. And they were back tomorrow in their old familiar surroundings. At least something! And you all will get support from us if you want it. Here in our village, everyone helps each other and the monsters will be punished at some point. Promised! Thank you very much, but... But what?! Well, it's like that. Mm. I'm really happy that Billy and Lissy will be living with me soon because I really like my niece and my nephew. But the house in which I live uh, is a little strange. So I mean, I'm not crazy or anything like that, but I feel watched very often in my house. It is particularly strong when I walk past the old basement door, but the door is locked and the cellar key has been missing for years. Nobody can be in the basement. And apart from me and my dog, nobody lives in the house. If you understand what I mean. It's all normal. The lot of work, your loneliness in the big house, the bereavement in your family and the future change. At some point I would also start to think I would see ghosts. But when Lizzie and Billy also live with you at tomorrow, it will definitely stop with the imaginary spook. You're right, Mr. Wright. Thank you. You're welcome, but now I have to go on. See you soon, Lucy. See you soon. Hi. Hey, Tommy. How are you? What do you think about uh, the weather? Hot and sweaty. You're right. But the days are getting hotter. There's nothing you can do. Fuck. Have you actually seen the new Miller girl? Uh, a great woman, right? Her beautiful hair, her smile, her lovely cherry mouth, her... Teeth. Yeah, right, her teeth... Uh, what? Uh, yes. Ooh, uh, well, yeah, uh, that too. So, I have to go on. Bye, Tommy. Hello, Putzi. Are you alright? Hello, Inge. Oh well, from tomorrow, Lissy and Billy will finally move in with me. I'm glad for you. Then you are finally all together again and you will hear children's laughter in this house again. This is also important when you consider what a bad past the house went through. Thank you very much, Inge. But tell me, what kind of past? Do you know what was going on here back then? Don't get me wrong, but sometimes I think it would be haunted in my house. No, you think I'm crazy, don't you? No, I think so. Well, in the last years of the war, the brother of my husband Herbert 
was interested on your house. Before my husband and I sold it to you, it was in the position of my brother-in-law for a short time. He was a high-ranking Nazi officer and he was tracking down a secret thing. I mean, it was about the power of an old pharaoh. Then, from one day to the next, he and a companion had vanished without a trace. Since the children had heard often mysterious noises from the house and assumed that it would be haunted. The children also told of a large portal to the spirit world that was supposed to be in the house too. After that, the house remained empty for a long time until you wanted to move in. So, is it haunted in the house or not? I don't know. I only know that you live there now and you are the boss. It is your home and you should feel comfortable there. Don't let anything or anyone destroy it. Alright Inge, I will go in then. I also have to tidy up a bit. Thanks again for all the news. Yes, my big one! Are you doing well? Nice to see you again, Princey. You scared me now. I'm going to clear up something now and then we will go for a walk, yes? Hey, Princey, what's going on? Do you see anything in the corner? But there is nothing. Strange. If someone else was standing there, Princey would growl. But he doesn't growl. I mean, why he should? Well, there is nothing. Princey doesn't growl either. But why is he so fixated on this corner? Never mind. Come on, my boy. Stop spinning and go into the living room. Gosh, it's suddenly cold here. And the stale air. Strange. Then I want to clean up. Oh! Who is knocking there? Are Lizzie and Billy here already? Yes, I'm coming. Strange. There was no one at the door. Did I just imagine the knocking sound? No! There it is again. Where does that come from? Wait a minute. That seems to come from the basement. But that really cannot be. I will have a look there. Well, the door has suddenly opened for the first time in decades. Has it ever been open since I live here? I don't think so. Then I go to see what is going on here. But wait a minute. Is there electric light in the basement? I think I would rather take a lantern with me. Hello? Is anyone down here? Hi there. Oh shit, what's that? Where does this folk come from? I smoked opium a few times 12 years ago. I had never felt a change and now the shit starts to walk or what? The basement is so strangely full. Have dark rituals been held here? Although you shouldn't touch things like that. 
but I was still very surprised that candles also burn here. There must also be someone here in the basement. What's over there where it's dripping? and a little fountain to banish a fountain spirit here I think I would rather go back I can't get rid of the feeling of being observed. Oh, what do I feel there? Lucy, 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 wake up and come back to you. Jack? Hey, Jack! Good to see you. But how do you get in here? And where's the folk? A few days ago you said I should take you to the train station today because of your nephew and your niece. I have to go to the city anyway and should take you with me until then. I stood knocking on the door for 10 minutes and no one opened the door. That's why I took the emergency key you gave me once. When I was inside I saw the open cellar door and found you down here. What happened then? Did you fall down the stairs? And what kind of fog are you talking about? Today we're going to the train station? Then I have been lying here since yesterday. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm starting to think that I'm not alone in this house. Of course not. Your dog is there too. No, I don't mean that. I think it is haunted here in this house. And yesterday there was folk in the basement from which a skeleton come towards me. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? You think it's a haunted house here? Aren't you a little bit too old to believe in something like that, motherfucker? <coughs> Fuck, what was that now? Did you hear that too, Lucy? This cannot be. Here, these are definitely just the old lines. There is a normal explanation for everything. Let's go, Lucy. Wow, I'm lucky! I have just arrived at the station and the train is coming over there. Hello Uncle Luzi, nice to see you again. Yes, it's really great that we are finally back here. I think so too. Then come on you two.
That was faster than I thought. Walk 20 minutes and we are here. Welcome to your new home. Wow, that's a big house. Our house wasn't so big. Who do live here with you? Apart from me, only my dog Princey still lives here. And now, of course, you too. And who is that at the window? At the window? I can't see anything. There's no one. It's gone. Strange. I could have sworn that a dark person would have stood there and stared at us. Yes, exactly. The boogeyman or what? No sooner are we back in the village than you start to see monsters, Billy. I didn't say I saw a monster. I don't know what I saw. I only know that I saw something. Also, I don't think monsters are lurking in the house. They are lurking in the skull forest. Something in the skull forest killed our parents, but they didn't have to be monsters. But Lissy, I even heard Father Ben talk to Mr. Wright and Tommy that a hutch person with bad rings came fluttering out of the forest. These are all just fairy tales and imaginations. Uncle Lucy, no, say something about it. Don't argue and let's all go inside first. Yes, we are back, Princey. You are a sweetie. Hello, Princey. So great that you have a dog. Oh, what's going on with your dog? Why did he run away so suddenly? I don't know. He's been acting so strange for days. Something is going on here, but I don't know what yet. But you two don't have to be afraid. Nothing will happen to you. On the first floor, you can get to your room, the first room on the left. Take a look at it. In the meantime, I'm getting everything ready to be able to start lunch in Halvenana. All right, Uncle Lucy. See you then. Come on, Billy. Let's go upstairs. The house is big, but this room is small. We had was sleeping places. You're right. Let's unpack all things first. Now I want to see what I could cook today. Hey, you scared me. My niece is underneath the sheet, right? But I tell you, don't do it again, Lissy. What shouldn't I do again? Oh, sorry, I thought you were under the sheet. So, Billy, this also applies to you. Hello, you two. I had heard my name. What also applies to me? Wait a minute. You both came from above and didn't try to scare me, disguised as a ghost? Then who is behind me all the time? You mean more? What was that? Don't spin around, both of you. Here are no ghosts, no monsters or other shapes. This isn't a monsterican house of ghosts. 
Please stop it. I don't believe in anything like that. But slowly, you're really scaring me. Please forgive. We didn't want that. I guess I just imagined something. That can happen. Don't worry about it. Maybe we should lie down for an hour or two and rest a bit. Maybe we will be better then. Maybe I should do that too. Then let's all go up. My room is directly across from your room. Really strange what is happening here now. So far, if the spirits are really here in the house, they have only made themselves felt but haven't attacked me. Strange. I think the ghosts want to tell me something. But what? Or they wait until they have enough energy to do something to me. What's wrong with this house? I have to find out. But so that I don't drag Lissy and Billy into it. The two had to go through enough horrible things. The whole thing doesn't leave me alone. I have to go back to the cellar. Where was my lantern again? The whole thing still raises so many questions. So much that I don't understand. I no longer feel comfortable in my own house. This isn't normal anymore. Something very strange is going on here. And I finally want to understand what this whole hound is doing here. I feel your presence, ghost. Come on, show me. Or are you afraid of me? Room service. Your wish is my comment. Wow, that was probably a bit too provocative. Maybe I should lie down now and get some energy. Maybe I just imagine it. It all because I had so little sleep. Yes, that could be. So, go to bed and relax a little. If you don't want to hear, you have to feel. The answer to your question is in the south. Deep in the sun. Gosh, what was that a dream now? A nightmare. But it felt so real. Maybe I should speak to Inga again and ask her, then she doesn't know more about this house. Or her husband. I will call her immediately. Who's that now? I will have a look. Inge? No, that's a funny coincidence. I was just going to call you. Please come in. What do you want from me? There is something else I would like to tell you that could be very interesting for you. Well then, please let us go into the living room and talk about everything. Now I'm curious to hear what you have to tell. I wanted to tell you something too, but let's get started with your news. Because of the pharaoh, I spoke with my husband again and he remembered it well. His brother probably also said that the pharaoh was called Amen-Ra and was very cruel in his lifetime. So cruel that he could not find peace even after death. 
the only place here in the house where there was supposedly a portal that could be used to summon the pharaoh is in the cellar. Did this pharaoh have a badly disfigured face? Yes, as punishment for his crimes during his lifetime. How do you know that? I saw him earlier in my dream. He even spoke to me. I think a parapsychologist could help you. I know a very good one and would give you his number. Many years ago another story scared the villagers here. We are talking about Count Vincent, who lived in the forest in his castle. It was said that the Count was a vampire and everyone had to be careful. I know the scary castle. It was said about my childhood that no one shouldn't go there because it would be haunted. At the time that it was with Vincent and me, I had been married to my husband for a long time. I loved him, but I also had feelings for Vincent too. I never saw him as a monstering vampire. He was a wonderful person for me. Nearby I was happy, but at the time I was already an old woman. But Vincent said I could be young again when he made me to a vampire. He also had feelings for me and it was a wonderful time with him. I couldn't meet him often because otherwise my husband would have noticed. And I didn't want to hurt my husband either. I was over 70 years old but felt like 17. But one day I found out that Vincent was meeting another woman that he wanted to bite. I was so sad. Then why do you want to bite another woman? You said you can only bite someone every hundred years who would be a vampire after that. I wanted to be with you because it would be a relationship for eternity. What's going on here? Oh, I'm unhappy. Please don't cry, my beloved Inge. I understand your concerns, but they are unfounded. My darling, I love only you. I want to bite Veronica, but only then there is a full moon to make her in a she-werewolf. As a she-werewolf, I can make her a servant. I only do this for you, because if you live here, you should also have a servant. Only you will get the bite from me to make you in a vampire. Oh yeah, that's what you're going to do? Well, I'm glad again. It is really wild land. How did it go on then? I mean... You're still not a vampire, are you? That's right, I am not. I thought everything would be fine. But when I wanted to go back to him, a few days later, his ghostly servant told me that Vincent was no longer in the castle and would never come back. I ran home sadly. On the way home, I took the shortcut through the skull forest. Shortly before clearing, I couldn't believe my eyes. There was Vincent, a witch named Grace, her son Thomas and Veronica. So we had decided for her. I waited until they were gone and then continued to go home. I never told my husband Herbert about it. The time has come to say goodbye. I'm done to leave you far behind. The time has come to say goodbye. I'm done to leave.
little later I found out a little bit about the story of Grace and Thomas, even before they came to this Munsterigen group. That was a few days before my husband and I had to give the house to the Nazis, where you live now. I am going to the forest again to collect a few herbs for your potions. I know that your eyes are no longer the best and I can help you. Oh, my good boy, that's sweet. Do that. Thank you. Later then. So let's see what I find for herbs. Oh, hello! How unusual! A man looking for herbs in the forest? This is woman's work. Shouldn't your wife actually do that? Good afternoon. The herbs are for my mother. I don't have a wife. So, a helpful, unmarried, handsome young man stands in front of me. Handsome? Well, so when you mean that? Thank you for the compliment. You are handsome too. By the way, my name is Thomas. Thank you very much. My name is Veronica and I don't have a husband yet. But maybe, if you like, we could get to know each other better and see if we match. Very much, Miss Veronica. My mother needs a lot of help. But what would you think of it? when we meet again here in the forest in a week. Very much. See you soon. Very good. My first willing sacrifice now that Vincent has made me in a she-werewolf. Hey, woman, are you Grace Blackhead? Yes, I am. And who are you? Well, you don't care who I am. Only that I am from the SS and I'm here on behalf of the Führer. Surely you have a hard time as you have to worry about being evacuated every day, right? I could protect you. Yes, please. But then I ask for something. People here tell each other that you are a witch. People tell a lot when the day is long. I'm just an old woman who knows a bit about herbs, not more. People also tell themselves that you have a powerful book of summons. That's why I'm here. <laughs> why are you looking? Because you're too late. The book is no longer in my possession. There was another prospect who kindly gave me my life for the book. This bastard threatened me with a pistol. Who has it? What's his name? What will I get when I tell you the name? As I said. I assure you that you will have no more problems with any of us. It's a deal. 
The name of the man is SS Gruppenführer Dr. Oswald Grünbaum. Thank you for this detailed story. Now I understand everything much better. And because of this Amen Ra, I will call this parapsychologist later. You're welcome and thank you very much. Thanks? For what? For listening to me and not judging me for my naivety about Vincent. But now I have to go home. All the best and see you soon. I know what you mean. All is fine. Thank you and see you soon. Then I will go to the phone quickly. Hello? Hi, my name is Luzi Nieberts. I live with my niece and nephew in an old farmhouse in the village on the Skull Forest. I have a problem with ghosts. I think at least that they are ghosts. I'm overwhelmed by the situation and, and need help. Ah, yes. Alright, thank you very much and see you tonight. With pleasure, see you tonight. Apparently this parapsychologist actually believes me. Now I am relieved. I think after all this excitement Billy, Lissy and I could use some cake and tea now. Then I quickly prepare everything and call them down. I'm kind of tired, but I can't sleep. It feels so strange to be back in the village. Yes, I feel the same way. Our parents would also understand that. You actually still have your doll. Yes, do you remember when our parents gave them to me for Christmas? And they gave you your head. Whenever I feel lonely and fearful, I am happy when my doll is with me. Billy, did you actually see anything outside the window earlier? Yes, I did. Can you tell me more about it? Now all of a sudden? Please don't be angry with me, but I don't want to tell. I'd rather distract myself. This phenomenon made me very afraid. Too bad, but I can understand you well. I also don't like to talk about things that scare me. Kind of strange. I'm glad to be with Uncle Lucy with you now. But I'm still afraid of this house. I'm starting to know why we can't rest here today, Billy. And why not, Lizzie? I think the coming night will not be normal, but special. Special? Yes, I know it is strange, but somehow I feel it. You feel it? I think you don't think much of that. Didn't you even dismiss it as nonsense? Yes, but... Lissy, Billy, I have cake and tea for us. Are you coming down? Yes, we are coming. Let's talk about it later, Billy. All right. Gosh, you made an effort, Uncle. It looks great. Yes, really. Thank you. That pleases me. We want to sit down now, yes? Oh my god! What's going on now? Lord have mercy! It was definitely the ghosts. Or maybe unusual magnetism. Unusual magnetism? 
Did you forget what you said to me upstairs in the room? No matter what it was, the fact is that there is unfortunately no tea or cake anymore. I am very sorry. Please be so kind and go in front of the house. Play a little. In the meantime, I will clean everything up here. All right. See you then. Come on, Billy. Hello, you two. Hello. Good afternoon. May I ask you something? Where can I find your Uncle Lucy here? How do you know that he is our uncle? Oh, whatever. Our uncle always says we shouldn't talk to strangers. But when you know our uncle, it will be fine. Our uncle is in the house. He's just clearing away shards. Oh, shards? What happened then? The dishes suddenly started to float, then everything fell to the floor and broke, and the tea and the nice cake also ended up on the floor. Billy, that's not why the gentleman is here. As my brother told you, our uncle is in the house. He can tell and explain you everything better than we can. All right, thanks to both of you. Goodbye. Well, that would be done now. Everything cleaned up again. Oh, well, that must be the parapsychologist. That was fast. Good afternoon, Mr. Ernst. Nice that you have found time for me. Please come in. Hello. Many thanks. It's best to sit in the living room. Follow me, please. With pleasure. It's good that you're only coming now. I just had to tidy up. It looked a bit messy here. Yes, I heard about it. This is apparently getting crazier here with you, right? Right, it's getting stranger and I think I'm going to go crazy myself. It seems like a strong energy is coming from the cellar. Yes, Mr. Ernst. It's very creepy there. The basement door has only been open since yesterday. Before that, nobody had been down there for decades. Before that, I often felt like I was being watched and had strange dreams. People always tried to chase me away from here. Once, I even dreamed that I was naked in my cellar. It's been getting worse since yesterday, and I think I can see things. Apparently, at least, one of the ghosts wants to tell you something important. Aha, I understand. I think so. Can ghosts really speak to you? Well, not like us, but they can talk to the living. However, this requires a lot of energy and is quite exhausting for ghosts. That is why most spirits only speak the most important thing. It is easiest for them to contact the living when they are asleep. Whatever is possible is to penetrate the body of a living person. With his permission, of course. But it is also very emotional for the mind. Suddenly, 
the ghost can smell, taste and feel a heartbeat again. Now I understand better and better. This is absolutely amazing when you think about it. Do you know how many ghosts could be in this house? There is a very active spirit here in the house. But it isn't the only one. Difficult to say, but I guess there are only 20 spirits. I haven't been here long enough to judge that correctly. 20 ghosts? I haven't seen that many yet. Many simply have too little energy to make themselves felt enough to be noticed by you. The most active ghost desperately wants to speak to you. He appears to have been a former king or pharaoh and is moving towards us. Where he is? I can't see him. Can you do it? I can't see him, but I can feel him. He is right behind me and would like to penetrate my body so that he can talk to you. I would be ready. And you? <sighs> okay. I'm curious to hear what the ghost will tell me. Greetings to you. My name is Pharaoh. Amen. Of course, and I'm the Count of Riperstone. Ah! Help! You have now seen my power. I hope you are treating me with respect now. My time to speak is just in a minute. So listen to me. Get out of here as fast as you can. Take your family with you and go. Otherwise, death awaits you. Death? Do you want to threaten me? Why should I leave my home? I'm not the intruder, but you. You and the rest of ghosts. I don't want to threaten you. I just want to warn you. Go forth to find a solution. But I can't say more, because ghosts are not allowed to intervene in the fate of humans. My nephew, my niece and I don't let ourselves be driven out of here. But we will try to drive all of you out of here. Then you will die. I'm no longer afraid. No, that's right. You are just... Stupid. It's not always what it seems. I won't warn you a second time. Oh, hello. It is over? Did he talk about to you? He spoke through you. Didn't you notice that? You rarely notice anything yourself. In such a situation you are almost in a trance. What did he say now? He introduced himself to me as Pharaoh Amen Ra and said that the children and I should leave here otherwise we would die. But I am not going to be driven out of my home. I don't think this spirit wants to warn and protect me. 
He just wants to take my home away from me. I was so happy to find an affordable place to stay after the war. I love this house. I love this village. And I love the inhabitants. This is my home. And I can't just leave it behind me. I understand you well. Can't you just expel the ghosts out of the house? No, I am a parapsychologist, not a ghost hunter. But I have contact to a ghost hunter. Maybe he could help you. We can do it like that. Thank you very much. Because you, I have learned a lot. You're welcome and goodbye. All right. Thanks, Mr. Ernst. All of this has now taken me so bad that I first need a break. I'm suddenly so tired. I don't want to fall asleep yet. What was that? A scream? But from where? Did it come from the basement? No, it's enough. So, you ghosts. Supposedly, you should be so many. Then everyone who I don't know should show up. What's wrong? Can't you? Or are you too scared of me? Well, what's going on now? This wall? Is this a walled up chamber? What is behind it? That would have to be open. For heaven's sake, Lord have mercy, I think I'm losing my mind. Hello, Lucy. Is that real enough for you? Amen, Ra. Lucy. Yes, that's my name. What do you want from me? Finally, tell me. And don't speak in riddles. I can't say. Lucy, 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 Lucy. Hey, wake up again, dear uncle. Oh, hello, you two. Sorry, I must have dozed off briefly. What time is it? It's evening. Oh, really? Uh, what do you think of it? Then I make dinner and we play a round of cards afterwards. A great idea. That will definitely make us all think better. Lizzy, come, come here. here. Join, Join me. Come, come to the sky, the sky forest. In the sky forest? I'm supposed to stay away from the sky forest. But when the forest is calling my name, I should probably go there. 
Maybe then I could find out what killed our parents. Are you alright, Lucy? Did you just hear that too? Did someone call my name? You must have imagined that. Come to the kitchen now. Lucy! Hurry up! Only, Only the special, special monster at night will get answers to your, your questions. questions. Where we will. Later, when everyone goes to bed, I sneak out again and go into the forest. I will certainly be back soon. What's wrong? Are you still coming today? Or do you need an extra invitation? Yes, you are right. Please forgive me. I was suddenly in my thoughts again. They think we ghosts are evil. We just wanted to warn them of the dangerous monsters in the Skull Forest and therefore chase them away from here. I thought at last after my death I could have done something. But no. A pity. No, they all run to their doom one after the other. And how does the story continue? Well, you already know that from the first story. But maybe you see them with completely different thoughts, because yet you know what happened before. But what happens to Billy? I still haven't answered that question. Maybe I will tell you about it another time. I hope you learned something from this story. No, with these words, I am releasing you into the night. If you come across a forest on the way at your home tonight, and feel that the forest is calling you, better not answer this call. After all, you never know then and where the next monsteric night will peak. Good night. Incorporated. Because you love it, then you hate it. 
and you hate it. You're such a sad. And now you're never gonna make it. Bad situation. Get out, get out, go. I'm not such a pay. Cause the devil is a loser. Tease my bitch. For better or for worse, and you don't care which. Cause the devil is a loser. Tease my bitch. Running in the trouble, you sketch. And there we no The devil is a loser. Just failing. The devil is a loser. Confess your sins. The devil is a loser. Save the preacher. The devil is a loser. You got yourself some grease paint. Set of white and black. Oh, you get worse louder. And Jen Simmons on your back. Hey! Cause the devil is a loser. Tease my bitch. For better or for worse, and you don't care which. Cause the devil is a loser. Tease my bitch. Running in the trouble to sketch He's my bitch For better or for worse and you don't care which Cause devil is a loser and she's my bitch Running into trouble your sketch Yeah! Running into trouble your sketch Hey! Running into trouble your sketch